Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll start with a couple of announcements always. Uh, first is this week on Saturday is the Food Over Medicine Retreat and if you're in the greater Columbus area or you can drive here, um, we're going to do a whole Saturday based on my book which the concepts are still very relevant and pertinent and so it's everything from um, diet to how to manage your doctor. and. Doctors need a lot of managing, as it turns out. So, <laughs> so anyway, come spend a, the day with us, and lunch is included, and um, you'll really enjoy all the stuff you're going to learn. Second thing is, we're getting closer and closer to Denmark. I'm going to be in Copenhagen presenting at a conference on March 9th, and a lot of our European folks are coming. I'm so excited to meet some of you that I've had a uh, phone relationship or email relationship with for a long, long time. So, if you're interested, send me an email. I'll give you my email address in a second and uh, send me an email I'll send you the agenda but it's going to be really really fascinating I'm getting in early so I can take time to meet with people and that sort of thing um, I have made a promise like so many times I'm gonna post stuff on my blog and then I do it and I stop and this year I'm really proud of myself because I'm really posting stuff on my blog <laughs> doing it regularly. So I created this section for interviews and I've got a couple of those posted. I'm going back and, and retrieving links to interviews that I've done that I think are really good. And um, I've posted some food journals and some of you ask me, um, like, what's it like to be me in, you know, one day of my life? And so I'll post that from time to time. I, it's amazing that somebody would care what I do every day, but maybe more than anything, just how I fit it all in. So you go to drpampopper.com, drpampopper.com click on blog and then you can see the categories and, and um, you can noodle around a little bit. And I am going to continue to post there regularly. It's, it's kind of fun and um, I don't, it's a, really not appropriate to post that kind of stuff on, uh, um, on the regular Wellness Forum website because it's not all about me at Wellness Forum. It's hard to imagine, isn't it, that it's not about me, but it really isn't all about me. It's about what we're doing here. Uh, last but not least, uh, the Food Over Medicine Coaching class for this semester starts on Thursday. So if you're thinking you'd like to open a food over medicine chapter, send me an email about any of the stuff at pampopper at msn.com and I'll send you information. We can set up a time to talk. All right, so I have some really good stuff to share with you um, today. And it has to do with cancer treatment. And I say this all the time, but cancer patients have, uh, have it's difficult being a cancer patient. They're faced with a dizzying array of um, information at a time when it's really time to think clearly because you can be panicked about the diagnosis. There's fear, there's shock, there's pressure from doctors and friends and family offering advice. And I remember one time I read an article written by a cancer patient who survived a really terrible diagnosis and then wrote about what happened to him. And he said, for the first three or four months after my diagnosis, I'm speaking on behalf of him. He said, I was bombarded with so many suggestions from family and friends. I wasn't sure what was going to kill me first. Uh, the cancer or all the people bombarding me with advice and saying, you should do this and you should do that. So it is hard to, to sort out. And um, But I wanted to cover one treatment option because there's some new research I think is interesting to, to pass on to you. Um, cancer patients are often told to take high dose vitamin C. And then they get a lot of conflicting stories about it. So advocates for vitamin C claim that it can be effective some of them, you know, just use it by itself. If you take enough of it by itself, it kills cancer cells. Um, and then on the other side of it, you have people who are saying that um, it interferes with uh, cancer treatments. Conventional cancer treatment is dangerous and you shouldn't use it under any circumstances whatsoever. Neither of these claims are true. Uh, research shows that when it's used as an adjuvant, not by itself, uh, vitamin C can enhance the efficacy of conventional medicine, reduce toxicity, and extend survival. Now, one thing I'll mention is I found this information I'm going to share with you um, during an interesting time because the advanced study book that we're using this month uh, for discussion is Choices and Healing, which was written in 1996 by Michael Lerner. Phenomenal book, by the way. Um, it's a big book. We're going to end up doing more than a couple classes on this one. But um, one of the things that Michael Lerner covers is alternative treatments in here, and he has a lot of information about vitamin C and the controversy over it. So I was glad to find some some updated information to talk about here. So here it goes. Researchers at the Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Iowa conducted a phase one clinical trial 
in which patients with glioblastoma multiform were given IV vitamin C in addition to the standard of care chemotherapy and radiation that they would get, um, and uh, while other patients received just the standard of care chemotherapy and radiation. Um, now, the thing that, to keep in mind here is that GBM patients are, this is a very aggressive form of cancer. The death rate's very, very high. Um, the first thing is, I'm not sure uh, why we spend a lot of time trying to keep people in this situation from getting treatments like vitamin C or whatever the heck else they want to do based on their terrible prognosis, but only in America, right? But um, in any case, so these patients who are in dire straits, either standard of care treatment or standard of care, standard of care treatment plus IV vitamin C. Well, in this study, vitamin C increased survival by four to six months. The patients taking vitamin C survived an average of 18 to 22 months versus 14 to 16 months for those who just received conventional care. The researchers reported that vitamin C in high doses can target and kill cancer cells but leaves healthy cells alone. Another study showed that intravenous vitamin C increased the cytotoxicity of radiation treatment for pancreatic cancer patients while protecting the normal surrounding tissues. The researchers concluded that vitamin C is, quote, an optimal agent for improving treatment of locally advanced pancreatic cancer. Several other studies have shown similar results, that vitamin C is toxic to many cancer cell lines, including melanoma. Some studies show that it actually increases the efficacy of drugs, the opposite of what many um, critics say. It actually increases the efficacy of the drugs. It doesn't interfere with them. Um, and some of them, like cisplatin, tamoxifen, um, doxorubicin, and paclitaxel, um, it actually enhances their activity. While killing cancer cells, vitamin C has been shown to reduce the side effects and cardiotoxicity of adriamycin with no reduction in its anti-tumor efficacy. Um, so again, we're not talking about just giving people high doses of vitamin C and nothing else. We're talking about along with chemotherapy, radiation, whatever is appropriate for the patient, it can extend life, it can accelerate the rate of, of uh, toxicity to the cancer cells, and it can also reduce the side effects associated with some of these drugs, which are very, very harsh. Now, in order to be effective, vitamin C has to be delivered intravenously because the body limits the amount of vitamin C that can enter the bloodstream when it's consumed orally. And I talk about this a lot in other lectures that don't have to do with cancer. People have this idea that you can just take massive amounts of nutrients in supplement form orally, and that it all gets into the system. And so the idea is if a little bit of a particular nutrient is a good thing, then 25 times as much must be better. But it doesn't all get into the bloodstream uh, because the body has numerous ways to keep yourself from flooding your body with, with high doses of nutrients. So if you're taking an oral dose, sometimes as low as 200 milligrams on a daily basis, but certainly the type of dose that it would take to have an effect like what we're talking about here, um, you end up with reduced absorption absorption of vitamin C, increases in urinary excretion, and reduced bioavailability. Um, so vitamin C that delivered intravenously works because it bypasses the metabolic che checkpoints uh, that would normally keep it out of the bloodstream and it elevates the plasma levels to the concentration that has been achieved in experiments on both animals and in lab experiments that is required to produce the results that you get here. So I, I wanted to make sure that that was covered because I've seen many people in this office over the years who are buying mega doses of vitamin C, so much that they're having diarrhea and all kinds of side effects from it and very little of that is actually getting into the bloodstream. So to the extent that vitamin C can be effective, it is not going to be effective if you take it orally. Now the mechanism of action, and this is very important, when, when you see something going on, the identification of a specific mechanism of action makes a huge difference in the credibility um, that the, the, what we're proposing here is reliable. So it's thought to be a glitch in metabolism which increases iron levels in cancer cells. And so the excess iron interacts with the high level of vitamin C and this results in the production of hydrogen peroxide and a lot of free radicals and some of these chemicals damage cell DNA um, and kills some cells immediately and damages other cells so that the they are more vulnerable to the um, effect of drugs used to go after cancer cells uh, and radiation 
Now, as with any substance that has an effect, and this is important to remember, when you're talking about supplements, um, the ones you have to be the most careful of are the ones that have an effect, because if they have an effect, there will be a side effect. In fact, that's the issue with drugs. There, there are no drugs without side effects, because they all have an effect. So high doses can increase urinary excretion of calcium, iron, and manganese, while increasing absorption of iron in normal cells, which can be toxic. So high iron levels may be beneficial um, in, in cancer cells when combined with vitamin C, but not so much in normal cells. Um, high dose vitamin C can cause increased urinary oxalate and uric acid levels, can alter lab tests for markers like aminotransferases, uh, bilirubin, and glucose. So anybody who's using vitamin C should inform um, their doctor or doctors that they're taking it so that if these tests come back abnormal, uh, the doctor doesn't assume that something else is going on. It's contraindicated for patients with renal disease, and anybody who's taking high dose vitamin C, either orally or intravenously, needs to be monitored because kidney stones can be a byproduct, even for a person who doesn't uh, have kidney disease. Outcomes for cancer patients are best when people combine the best of conventional medicine with alternative medicine. Um, I did a, um, I filmed a video clip a few weeks ago and I got a lot of hate mail about this. That's when I know I'm doing the right thing is when the hate mail comes. But anyway, I was talking about the fact that the statistics are pretty dreadful for people who, um, uh, generally, for people who get no conventional treatment. So this all or nothing, joining a camp, these polarized camps in healthcare are a bad idea, particularly a bad idea in, in cancer treatment because the best outcome usually come from looking at a lot of ideas and putting together a comprehensive plan that makes sense, um, that includes the best of everything. So when looked at that way, um, vitamin C becomes a great adjuvant um, as part of a cancer treatment plan that actually can make a very positive difference in the lives and survival of cancer patients. So um, there, there was some evidence in Michael Lerner's book about vitamin C um, and its efficacy. And also in this book, um, some of you, if you're not participating in the class, I'll just tell you this. In this book, some of the controversy that, that and how it started with Linus Pauling's research and that sort of thing that became very confusing. Linus Pauling made the mistake of making some claims he couldn't substantiate. And then that sort of, uh, not that medical doctors are really open-minded about this stuff anyway, but Linus Pauling's early claims about vitamin C, which can be substantiated, sort of got it off to a wrong start. And, um, but I think this is pretty reliable information, and when used responsibly, um, I think can be helpful to cancer patients. All right, hit the subscribe button. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and uh, I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.